the Superman of science, and he loves to play with fire. And the things he'll do, you can do, if you so desire, to try this at home with Mr. T. Hello, and welcome back to Do Try This at Home. I'm your host, Mr. G. This is the show that takes ordinary household items and turns them into something extraordinary. Today, we're going to be messing around with something called the Leidenfrost effect, or some people might want to call it the Leidenfrost point. What you're going to need to do this is ordinary tap water. An eyedropper might come in handy. And you're going to need a skillet that doesn't have any oil in it. It should be very clean and dry. And I prefer you to use a skillet that is not a non-stick skillet because just a standard metal flat-bottomed frying pan or skillet will work really well. We'll also need some source of heat. I'm going to be using my range or my cooktop here, which is an electric range. A gas one will work, an electric one will work, about any type that would normally do just normal, ordinary cooking. However, today we're not going to be cooking. We're going to be doing something quite different. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going, oh, there's one other item that I almost forgot about. I also have an infrared thermometer. This little gem here will show you the temperature of my skillet. Now, if you may not have one of these at home, don't worry about it. This isn't necessary, but it's optional. So, let me get the camera moved right on in here close. First, let me explain something. This skillet is on high heat and is heating up rapidly. The current temperature of the skillet is about 152 degrees, as we can see here on our digital thermometer. If I were to take a drop of water, a few drops of water, and put them on that skillet, you'll notice that they immediately evaporate. Now, evaporation occurs when the water gets heated and starts to boil and just turns to water vapor. So, we're going to let that pan heat up a little bit more. Now, as the pan heats up and the temperature increases, well, that didn't work out so good. Hmm, I wonder if this thermometer is very accurate. It says 150.4 degrees Fahrenheit, but I have a feeling that pan's actually quite a bit warmer than that. Ah, 164. As that pan's temperature gets close to water's boiling point, or rises above water's boiling point, watch what happens when I place drops of water in it now. Ah, the water still sizzles, but little droplets begin to dance around. Now, those tiny droplets of water are actually demonstrating the Leidenfrost effect, which really won't be in full swing until this pan gets even, even hotter. Ooh, 195 degrees. And, ooh, now we're starting to get large balls of water that are orbiting all around. These larger balls of water, still drops I would call them, they're round, are actually floating on a cushion of water vapor. They're, they're not even contacting the pan surface. Now that pan must be getting quite warm now. Nah, that can't be correct. 211, okay, we're getting hotter. I believe this thermometer only goes up to about 250 degrees, so. I can't be right. Yeah, maybe close. Anyway, we've got that one drop in there that's kind of rolling around. Now if we let this pan get even warmer, let me get some more water into my water dropper here eyedropper and we start to put water on there you'll notice that ooh, the water just barely even sizzles it just immediately forms a ball of water that's floating on a cushion of water vapor this is too cool now the one ball of water in there is starting to turn brown and that is because there are some contaminants that are burning off on the bottom of that skillet I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, there's a real tiny droplet kind of floating around in there too. Now that larger droplet almost looks alive. That's amazing. Let me zoom in a little bit on this. Look at that. That drop of water, or that now ball of water I would call it, or actually puddle of water, could last for a very, very long time. It's floating on a cushion of its own vapor that's being evaporated by the heat from the pan. Let's see what this pan's temperature reads now. Oh, well, that can't be correct. Ah, hi. Well, hi, thermometer, how are you? I don't think that's what it means. I believe the temperature of that pan is now probably approaching 300 degrees, if not hotter. So the Leidenfrost effect, at least at my, at my distance from sea level, occurs here at my house at about 300 degrees. Now, it'll vary. 
Look at this. Look at all those small balls rolling around. Let me zoom back out so we get a wider picture of that. Now we've got one large ball forming. Now the water tends to gravitate towards itself. It tends to, the balls try to, to, to reform. Their molecular structure tends to make them want to attract to each other and reform. Now, I can make those move around rather rapidly. Oh, that one large ball of water is a lot of fun there. Look at that thing. It's almost like it's alive. This is the Leidenfrost effect. This is so cool. You can try this at home, just be very, very cautious because this pan is very hot. If you're going to do this at home, use an old skillet that you don't care much about because it may end up scorching or burning. Um, if you're young, have somebody watch you while you do it. But look at that. That's amazing to me. Let's get another ball going fast, some balls going around that. Look at that. Look at those. Just skating around, almost like orbiting. It's like planets orbiting a sun. Uh-oh, the orbit's taking on an elliptical shape, and we're going to have a collision, maybe. But this is the light and frost effect, and man, this is a lot of fun. This is just so cool to watch. I could sit here and watch these, these drops or these puddles of water all day long. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'm your host, Mr. G, and remember, do try this at home. Today, we're going to be messing around. Maybe I should tell you what those items are first. And this is the show that... Let's do that in a different order. Ooh, glowing red. My... My, um... Range top here. So let's try that again. A non-non-stick skillet. Paint the results of our experiment. We'll let that get a little bit warmer. If we were to put water in this pan now, just a drop, Wow, we would get the light and frost effect. Why did that... Okay, so that sucked. Let's start that over. 